Hi there, I'm Jenny. I'm an artist and an illustrator. I'm also the founder of Wildlife Drawing. So if you're not already familiar with that, it is a drawing class where we swap out the Naked Life model and replace with animals and nature. So we've drawn many different animals over the past years, everything from wolves to owls to alpacas to penguins and dogs as well. And uh, the whole concept of the drawing classes is to uh, reconnect people with the natural world through drawing. 10% of our annual business profits are donated back to different animal charities and conservation charities and animal welfare is our absolute top priority. So today I'm going to take you through the basics of drawing an animal from life. Uh, you can draw your own pet dog or pet cat or find a photograph of one to work from. I'm going to be drawing a meal here. The meal is very, very sleepy, he's just been on a big walk, but he is uh, actually our Bosnian street dog that we adopted by a, a Wild at Heart Foundation about two years ago. And now he is living his absolute best life with us in Hackney. <laughs> All you're going to need today is some paper, something to draw with, so whether that's a pencil or charcoal or pen, whatever you fancy, and uh, an animal and also a bit of enthusiasm and a spot of confidence as well. Uh, so we're not really gonna look for a perfect portrait after out of this. Um, the whole idea is that we're gonna use drawing as a means to relax, a nice calming and mindful activity, just a way to forget our worries for a little while. So if you've got everything that you need, I'll get a meal nice and relaxed and um, we'll get going. <laughs> So there are two ways that you can do this. You can sketch your pet from life, uh, which I think you do get a lovely sense of the anatomy and the personality, but you have to be brave because your animals might move. You can't ask them to pose for you, which might mean that your sketches are a lot quicker and they may look a little bit more like this. So quite quick, quite loose, a little bit unfinished, but that's absolutely fine. The second way that you can do it is uh, to get a reference photo from, uh, you can take a photo of your pet or you can find one online to work from. I've taken some nice photographs of a meal which I'm going to work from today just to be sure that he's not going to get up and move in the middle of my tutorial. So um, let's get going. Okay, so to start with what I do is take a really good long look at my subject matter. If that's an animal, I try and familiarise myself with the proportions and the shapes within the body of the animal. And also it's a really good idea to have a think about the anatomical structure underneath. They say with observational drawing that 90% of the time should be spent looking and just 10% should be spent drawing. So bear that in mind as you go along. So I always begin my drawings of animals with a spine line. So a line that runs from the tip of the nose all the way down the back to the tip of the tail there. And this line here will form the anchor for all the rest of your marks. Next I'm going to try and map out the areas of muscle structure for his forelegs and his hind legs. And the way that I am doing this is just by very, very simple circles and ovals and just looking, using this spine line as a sort of measuring tool, thinking how long, how far down that line do these shapes need to be. And then with Emile's head, so he's looking at me. So all I can really see is a sort of kind of conical shape with his nose here and then two triangles for his ears and just work very faintly very loosely because you want to really be able to rub these lines out and just start to connect up all of those shapes. When you're drawing the limbs, sometimes they need to come out, extend out of the body. And the way I make sure that this angle is right is to turn this area into a clock face. So you can almost see at what time these limbs should leave the body. And I think Emile's front paw is at about sort of, about kind of 
five-ish. And just make sure that the pores line up with his bottom where he sat down here. You always just want to be cross-checking your lines, making sure that they relate to each other in the right way. And can't see the, too much of the pore behind, so I'm not going to draw too much of that in. That's important. If you can't see it, don't draw it. It's a good tip. And his back leg here. It's always a good idea to think about the, the joint structure in the legs as well. So this back leg here will connect up to his pelvis, and then the knee is here. This is where his ankle is, and then this is the pore extending here. So you've got essentially, you can figure out how that's working. So shoulder joint here, this is where Emile's elbow is, all the way down here, this is about his wrist, and so it's a really good way of just figuring out where all your joints are. So now he's starting to take shape, I'm just going to carry on mapping out the important parts. So this is sort of where his collar is here, and on his face, when I'm looking at the sort of relationship between the eyes and the nose, I like to draw myself a little cross on his head because that's very useful in figuring out where all the facial features are. And so we've got Emile's eyes. They're quite wide set actually, so I'm just going to look at the sort of relationship between them both and just draw where they might go not even drawing the eyes at all, the eyeballs, just kind of mapping out those shapes and then understanding that between those two eyes will be the nose. It's coming out at me, so that's sort of, you have to think about perspective here a little bit. We've got that bit here, and then we can see just his top lip meeting his nose, and then his little furry chin here. And then this bit just sort of a little bit of fluff around this area and we probably want to just complete this bit here so he's a bit furry on his tummy and then you can see the other paw just peeking through here and see that his other leg is just slightly behind this one and there we go it's a bit thicker in the body I think here and his tail's just slightly longer. Brilliant. But he's pretty much mapped out now. So if you are drawing an animal from life, this is the point when you can breathe easy because you've got enough information on your paper now to complete your drawing without your pet having to stay in the same position. But for now, we're going to um, stand back, check the proportions, and then go in for a little bit more detail and a bit more tone. A good way of checking your proportions is to do the sort of line method. I don't have a better name for it. What I do is draw an imaginary line um, vertically and horizontally. And so what I'm doing is just picking a point and I want to make sure that everything on my drawing matches everything that the line hits on the photograph. And so if I take the corner of Emile's ear, that should hit the corner of his eye, which should hit the corner of his muzzle, which probably needs to be extended a little bit there then. And it meets a sort of a, a little bit of white on his chest, which might mean that this bit needs to come out slightly. So we're carrying on with that line. And then that line meets where the pores cross. Yep, yeah, correct. And to the floor. And same again, if you go horizontally, you can sort of understand where everything works. So you might need to take a few lines here. So the middle of Emile's ear hits both eyes. And then the other side, corner of Emile's collar will hit his bottom lip. And out the other side. It's just a really good way of making sure everything is in the right place before you crack on with anything else. So the next task, before we move on to tone, is you want to just firm up these lines a little bit. Just make sure you've got some lovely, kind of definite outlines to work with. And 
as you've cross-checked everything, you can just be a little bit more heavy-handed with your pencil. And you'll see things just start to make a bit more sense. Now, if you're happy with all your outlines, you can start to take out some of those lines and those shapes that we used at the very beginning to figure out where everything was. And that means you've got a nice sort of clear canvas to begin your tonal work. When you're working in tone, what we're going to do is just start to identify the light source. So in this photograph of Emil, I can see that the light is sort of coming at him from this direction. I can see highlights here on his ear, his forehead, this kind of area. And the darkest parts are always going to be underneath his belly and, you know, the areas where his legs meet his body. And so what I'm going to do is use my pencil nice and sharp and just start to fill in some of those areas where he is the darkest. It'll give a really nice sense of three-dimensionality. But what I always make sure that I do is use my pencil in the same direction as the fur is going. That's really key. Even if the fur is sort of sticking out this way, um, always just follow that sense of shape um, because at, that time, at the same time you'll get a lovely texture but you'll also understand the shape a little bit better of the animal. When you're working with any kind of tone, it's really exciting to the eye that's looking at your drawing um, when you use the full tonal range of the pencil. And so what I often do is do myself a little like, tonal scale. And so what I do is press down to get the very darkest the pencil is capable of. And then just look at all the greys in between. So from a dark grey, 
into your sort of mid tones here, lighter, lighter still, all the way to the white of the paper, which will be your highlight. So using this whole range of tones will make for a really exciting, make for a really confident drawing. So I'm gonna bear that in mind as I go along with my shading. And it's gonna take me a little while. Emile is a, a very dark colored dog. And so I'm not going to talk the whole way through. We'll speed up and then we'll get onto the details. Okay then, as we're beginning to get to the sort of end of the shading part of the program, um, I'm just going to give you a couple of tips um, that I thought about as I went along. So the first one is to, as well as using your the direction of your pencil to show the shape of the dog, don't be afraid of keeping your pencil lines nice and light and fun. So where Emil is particularly furry, I've just kind of mimicked his fur with the, um, you know, the way I've been using my pencil. Uh, it just is quite nice to see, um, you know, a whole variety of different lines uh, as you go along. Also something to think about is when you're, um, when you're shading, you want to have a really kind of um, smooth gradient from light to dark. And so you can see here, I've sort of got white, mid-tone dark and so what I want to do is just use my pencil quite sensitively just to make sure that that turns into a nice yeah nice smooth gradient there that's what we're after and the third tip I have for you which is quite helpful for me at this point is that even though I am working into this drawing quite a lot there is not really any need for me to draw every single strand of fur on a meal's body um, that's because the human eye and mind is quite clever and the fact is if I just draw you know a hint of these hairs coming down here the the mind that is looking at the drawing will automatically kind of fill in this whole space without me having to draw every single one which is quite a good tip uh, when you're drawing something very textured or very complicated. So now we're going to move on to some of the details and the facial features. I have started to use a slightly harder pencil, which is a 2B, and what I'm going to do now is just start to work into the eyes. So I, I know pretty much where they are, so I'm going to just start to sketch the shape of the eyes a little more. And something that's so, so important when you are drawing uh, any eyes really is that it's not just um, this part here, it's not just the eyeball that is important, it's basically everything that's around the eye as well and dogs have incredibly expressive faces so they have these amazing eyebrows so it's a good idea to draw 
everything that you can see around the eye as well. So that you've got the eyelid, sometimes they have some nice eyelashes, you've got a little, little rim there. And then the way that the eye extends down here. And same for this side, nice big eyebrow. He looks a bit like he's asking for a treat at this point, which is, to be honest, most of the time. And so when we're actually putting the eyes in there, what we're going to do is just draw a circle for the area where his eyes are. And then what I always do is leave a nice little circle of white in the corner of his eye. I know that looks mental now, but as soon as you start filling it in, that little circle of white will just show that there is a reflection and that makes the eyes of the animal or whatever you're drawing just look so much more alive. There we go, something like that. Oh dear, he looks like a, he's about to cry. <laughs> Give them a little bit more here. And then when we've got the nose here. So noses are, I always find quite hard because they're poking out at you. And so you have to think about the foreshortening. They've also usually got a bit of a highlight where they're catching the light. So just pay attention to the areas of light and dark. Don't be afraid to fill it in a little bit if that's what it looks like. And there we go, just catching that on the side there. And making sure this looks like a long kind of pointy nose, just using my pencil marks to kind of follow the shape of the face there. Coming out at us like this. And then, yeah, he's got two kind of little jowly bits here and here and then yeah just underneath is his little his little furry chin there <laughs> he looks exactly like he's begging for food <laughs> and so once you're happy with um, all of the areas of the facial features, uh, you can do exactly what you did with the tone and just start to fill it in a little bit more, making sure that you leave the highlights here. Um, make sure you can see everything um, that's going on on the face. Um, and then we'll put some finishing touches on. So now what I'm going to do with a very, very sharp pencil is just add the last sort of finishing touches. And for me, that's just making sure, you know, all the outlines are nice and crisp and you've got all of the little kind of fluffy details here and there. You also might want to add a couple of whiskers for Emile's face. And he's got some pretty hefty eyebrows as well, so we're going to give him a couple of them. And yeah, just carry on all the way around. Um, Pick out any outlines that you think need a little bit more definition. And here as well. And then what we're going to do finally is just give Emil something to sit on. And so with any drawing you do, you don't want it to be floating in midair. So kind of what I do is just add a little bit of shadow underneath just to give that animal or whatever it is a little bit of context a little bit of gravity and weight um, perfect and just working into any last bits that you think need a little extra here and there Go. be careful not to overwork it though I think sometimes the beauty of a drawing lies in its sort of rawness and spontaneity and so you don't want to overwork it too much. Keep taking um, a moment to step back and have a look at how it is and if you think there's not really much that you can do to it after that then I'd say it's about finished. So we're 
we're pretty much there now. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. And actually I feel very calm and very relaxed. I haven't thought about anything other than this drawing um, for the whole time I've been doing it, which is um, a really nice relief. So all that leaves me now to do is put a little signature on the bottom. I've stopped dating my work because I have absolutely no idea what date it is. And we'll go and see what Emil thinks of his portrait. So Emil, what do you think of the drawing? Do you like it? Do you think it looks like you? Good boy. Thanks for being a great model. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did draw along at home, please, please, please share your pet portraits with us. Either you can tag them on Instagram with at wildleftdrawing, uh, or you can send them to me, info at wildleftdrawing.co.uk. I would love to see them. We also have plenty of other, of other drawing tutorials um, on the Wild Left Drawing Instagram and the YouTube channel. Um, so if you like this, you can draw yourself a skunk or a skink or a guinea pig, and we're adding to them every single week. Um, whilst there are plenty of other uh, much more worthwhile causes at the moment to be donating to, if you did like the sound of wildlife drawing, we do have gift vouchers for sale, which will of course be valid when we're all allowed out again and we can get back to drawing animals. But for now, I just want to say thank you again. Thanks to London on the inside and take care. See you soon.